<clears throat> Excuse me there. Of course it happens when we go live. <clears throat> One second, I'm going to take a sip of water. This is live, so. All right, good thing this is a pre the on-demand version, as everybody knows out there with, uh, with my format. So welcome, everybody, to another lesson of the Discover Headless Tech course. I'm Marcelo Lewin, the Headless Creator. As always, feel free to get a hold of me right there, Marcelo, at Headless Creator. Dot com. Today is, it's a really cool uh, episode, lesson that uh, we're going to have on the Discover Headless Tech course. Um, we're going to be showing you how to create a localized app uh, in iOS using Swift UI uh, and Strapi. Uh, it's uh, presented by Cy Garcia. He's been here before. You'll, you'll um, meet him in just a second. But before we get started, as always, you guys know the procedure. Uh, Register to headlesscreator.com. It's free, 100% free. You get access to a bunch of uh, courses. As you can see, here's the landing page for, for this lesson. But you can, uh, on the homepage, you'll see a bunch of courses. Uh, content modeling, which is I, I, I model a variety of things on a weekly basis, all 100% free. A bunch of other courses on, on uh, various other headless CMSs. Of course, the Discover Headless Tech there. Uh, and you can see on the Content Modeling Weekly, I have tons of lessons uh, on modeling a variety of things. Really important, uh, modeling is the beginning, the content modeling is the beginning of any project, regardless of which headless CMS you go uh, with. So you want to do it the right way. So again, it's all 100% free to sign up, uh, register for it, Marcelo, uh, I'm sorry, um, headlesscreator.com. And like always, send me an email if you have any questions. I'd love to answer them for you. All right, that takes care of all the marketing. That's why I didn't care that I, I did a little cough at the beginning because none of this will be in the on-demand version. The on-demand version will start right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to restart the intro. No more marketing. We're going to jump into the actual demo right now. So we'll see you in just 30 seconds. Well, hello, hello, and welcome to another lesson of the Discover Headless Tech course. I'm Marcelo Lewin, the Headless Creator. As always, Marcelo at headlesscreator.com. Just send me an email. I will get back to you as soon as I can. I'd love to answer your questions. Today, I have a special guest presenter, and he's actually back. He's been here before. His name is Cy Garcia. He's an iOS developer. That's all I'm going to tell you about him because I'm going to bring him on in just a second. But what he's going to show us today, and he'll tell us more about it, but he's going to show us how to build a localized app in iOS using Swift UI because there's some things you need to be aware of in iOS itself. And the back end will be accessing all the content through Strapi and how do you localize that content model and bring in content through that. It's going to be really cool. But before we get started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in Sai. Sai, welcome. I'm back. <laughs> You're back. You actually I, uh, never left. You've been there ever since the last episode. Literally, though, yeah. Like, I guess I didn't cause enough trouble last time, so I'm back here to no, bring more happiness. No, you were great. <laughs> you were great, man. Well, welcome back. Thank you for doing another lesson. No, I appreciate you having me. Now, obviously, you're a big fan of iOS uh, app development. So tell us real quick, how did you get into that? Yeah, so I kind of started around like high school, uh, a little bit. Uh, over eight years ago, I wanted to make a small app for my school. Just did a little YouTubing here and there, compiled something together, and from then on, yeah, I've been building apps ever since. What attracted you to iOS, let's say, versus Android? Were you just an owner of an uh, iPhone? Yeah, I think it just so happens that I'm an iOS user, so okay. why not, right? Right, <laughs> we're not going to start an iOS versus Android war here. You know, we're not here <laughs> for that. We don't want that. <laughs> no. Although our family here is divided. I'm the iOS person. My kids are the Android people. So that's oh, how it goes. And we still get along. So it's no problem. 
There's still hope. <laughs> There's still hope. No, no, no. We're not starting a war. I said we'll keep it. We'll keep it cool. So, alrighty, very cool. And how many apps? I think you did like a hundred thousand apps. I mean, how many did you? I've I've done a lot of apps. Uh, I think I start I stopped counting at like around twenty. But yeah, yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> and that's the best way to learn, right? Continue to learn is just to do it, right? Yeah. So my academic background is actually in statistics. So I don't get to actually learn all these like CS fundamentals. So right. my way of gaining experience is actually by working on my own personal projects. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I actually wrote one app. It was a tip making app. And just because I just wanted to experience the whole process of mm -hmm. developing it and publishing. And it was the a really nice but yet frustrating experience because I'm not a developer. So there's a lot of things you need to, there's very a lot of details you got to be aware of. So, oh yeah. anyway, okay, sounds good, Sai. So we're ready for your demo. So I'm gonna go ahead and show your screen here and um, we'll get started. Uh, what What's gonna happen is if any of you out there uh, on the internets um, have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. Uh, I will uh, funnel those questions and ask, uh, uh, side those questions. I'll have questions, but until then, I'm going to go on mute. It's all your sign. Awesome. So, yeah, I think the best way to kind of start this whole presentation is to actually show you what we're actually building. And as Marcel mentioned earlier, we're going to build a localized app in iOS using SwiftUI and Strapi. And you know, we've been talking about the we've been using the word localized or localization throughout this whole. Uh, this whole time, but I think it's really important to understand what localization is. And it's essentially the process in which our software actually adapts to our user's language of preference. And there are many ways of actually doing that. And in iOS, there's a very specific way on handling that. And actually, it's a really easy way of implementing that, especially considering that there's actually two sides of this. There's the app version or the app side, and there's also the strappy side. So Strapi, if you don't know, is a, I kind of think of it as like another uh, content modeling service where you can upload or have or host content up in a server. And what we're basically doing here in this demo is we're pulling, we're pulling content from Strapi to our app and displaying that content to our user like this. So currently right now, this is actually like content from my own uh, blog. I just like copy and pasted some stuff. But basically, you can see it's just I have two articles here. You click on one, and then you get to see some, uh, you get to read the content from here. And right now, everything is in English. So all of these two articles right here is coming from Strapi. We also have some static text here, like Strapi blog here at the top. If you go to settings, we also have uh, the settings title here and then some more static text here. So the idea is we want ha we want to have the user to or give the user the ability to select their preferred language for this specific app. So for instance, Strapi and our app, we support uh, French just for the sake of this demo. So for example, if our app supports French, I can click on this. If I go back to Strapi or Strapi app, you can see that the content is being pulled from Strapi uh, in French. And you can also see that the title and some of the static text in our app is also being translated here. And you can also see if we switch to another language, like say Chinese, if I go back, you can see that the title is in yeah, Chinese and all, all of the static text are in Chinese. But you notice that we don't have any content here. That's because currently right now, how we set up our uh, Strapi uh, server, we did not support uh, Chinese at the moment. So how do we fix that? So that's what I'll be showing you how to do. Basically showing um, uh, how to do all of this. So now that's the, that's the quick demo. Uh, let's actually go and look into kind of what we're dealing with here. As I mentioned earlier, there's actually two parts to this. So there's the Strapi side and the iOS side. So we're gonna learn how to set up Strapi to create a content type and localize that content, that content type. And I'll show you how you can actually provide different versions in different languages of the same article. And once we get that running, we'll go onto the iOS side and actually figure out, okay, how does iOS actually handle localization? Like all of the static text that you see in the actual app. Once we get that running, then we can pull data from Strapi using the user's preferred language within uh, the app. 
So this, this is what we'll be working on today. So let's go over to Strapi. So Strapi is a really straightforward uh, content modeling uh, service. It's uh, to get started, you simply just start off with uh, just create your own, uh, create the project. It's as simple as following the documentation here, and you'll be pretty much set up. And the interesting part about this is that because we want to apply uh, localization, this is actually a separate plugin that we want to have. And the cool thing about that is that plugin is actually already pre-installed once you create a new Strapi project. So once you have this Strapi project, once you've created it, uh, I'm assuming, or very likely if you create a new project, you're running a version uh, 3.6 or better, and that will already include all the localization uh, stuff. So there's no additional setup, just create a new Strapi project, you're pretty much all set. So the next thing you wanna do, we're gonna go ahead and create something called a content type. So as you saw earlier in our demo, we have articles which has specific fields. So how do you actually create that in Strapi? So you're gonna go over here to plugins, content type builders, and we're gonna create a new collection type. Uh, for this demo, let's just call this like blog. So that's my that's the display name. Now we're gonna go over here to advanced settings. And if you scroll down from advanced settings, you'll see this little checkbox called enable localization for this content type. So this is where all the magic happens. So once I click on this checkbox, you're all set. So now this content type will now support different languages or whatever language that you as a developer want to support. It's all this, it all starts with this checkbox, which is really cool, really easy to do. So I'll go ahead and hit continue. So now that I've created the actual content, we need to actually create the text fields or the, the, the different properties of this content type. So for this uh, simple example, let's say we have like a title, for instance. If you go to advanced settings, you'll also see that the localization field is also checked. That's because the actual content type is already, we've already enabled localization from the content type level. So all the fields will also be localized automatically, or, be, or this checkbox will be uh, enabled for us. That's cool. So let's do another field, let's say rich text. So this is where we will have, let's say our content. And you can see if you go to advanced settings, localization is also enabled. That's awesome. And then we'll hit finish. And what, as you're doing that, as you're finishing, one real quick point I wanna bring out, uh, cause I'm in, a big content modeling geek is that not every field needs to be localized. That's why they allow you to turn off localization. A perfect example is let's say you have a product content type that has a SKU and has a, tie, a name of the product and a description. Maybe the description needs to be localized, but the SKU won't be localized because most likely the SKU is the same across the board in different localizations. So keep that in mind that you don't need to localize every single field when you're, when you're doing localization. Exactly. Yeah, th that's a, Good point. Thanks for adding that. And uh, yeah, so once we have that, now our blog is now set for localization. But now how do you actually support different uh, languages? To do that, that's going to be inside settings. So under general, on this left side, we're going to go down to settings. And we're going to go to this tab here called internaliz internationalization. Yeah, try saying that a couple of times. Yeah, I have the same exact <laughs> problem. I like localization better, so much easier to say. Exactly, yeah, but okay, they're having fun. <laughs> so here I already, because I have this prep, uh, this whole project set up for us already, I already have uh, support for both English and French. Now we saw earlier in our demo, we didn't have Chinese support. So if we wanna add that, you just simply click on add a locale and you just search the locale code that you want to support. And kind of the downside to this is like, I wish I could just type in like the actual name, but I can't, but based on like my preparation, I know that the local uh, locale code that I'm looking for for this demo is ZHCN, which is simplified Chinese in this case. So we're gonna use this uh, just for the sake of, uh, for, for this demo. Now, what's in the advanced settings? Mm -hmm. Let's look here. So you can also set the default locale. So right now, 
uh, English is our current default locale. So when you pull data from uh, from Strapi, you're going to use a locale parameter. I'll show you how to do that in a sec. But if you don't pass a parameter in the locales, uh, if you don't pass a locale parameter by default, it will be it will default. pull data, whatever the default is. Yeah. Right. In our case, it's in English. But if I want to say set Chinese as my default, then if I don't pass any parameters to my locale, then it would pull data as right in, okay, in, uh, cool. Chinese. Yeah. So in this case, I'll leave this unchecked and I'll go ahead and add uh, locale. Cool. So now we now support three languages, including English. Now, as I promised, we're, I'm going to show you how to actually process this. So I already have a content model here called articles. And you can see I already have two entries. And to actually pull data is as simple as just typing in the actual, uh, well, I think it's called articles. There you go. And you'll uh, just pass in the URL slash the content type, and it will return a JSON. And you can simply parse this in whatever uh, uh, platform you're using this on. And if you want to, say, uh, pull data in a specific language, as I mentioned earlier, you just pass in the locale parameter and then type in the locale code. And for this example, let's say French, the locale code is FR. And then now everything is pulled in in French. So it's as simple as adding this parameter where you get that localization uh, feature, which is pretty cool, really easy. And now we have this stuff. So we currently have existing content. And you can actually filter everything out based on the locale. So this article right here, ID number four, Swift is Safe Language. Uh, there's a French version of this uh, article. So if I click French, uh, this is the uh, French version of that same article. And this is the French version of the other article that you saw earlier. And if I click on Chinese, well, I don't have anything here. That's because we didn't apply or we didn't add any, we didn't add the Chinese translation to our original uh, article. So how do we do that? How do we actually, suppose we have existing content and we want to support a new language. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. So we're gonna, let's go ahead and translate uh, this article here. So this is your common editor, nothing too special here. Now, if you look on, to the right side, this is where we have our dropdown called locales. If I click on this, this is where we can make or add the different versions or language versions of the same article. In this case, we want Chinese. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And now you can go ahead and populate this with the Chinese translation of the same article. 